In the niche genre that is AI presidents play D&D, there are tales of a legend. A man who quickly grew to be one of the most recognisable names whenever the genre would be spoken of. With 81 uploads covering over 20 hours of content, they have accumulated 725,000 views and obtained over 9,000 subscribers in just six months. He is an inspiration to content creators looking to take part in this ever-expanding AI world. From D&D to Call of Cthulhu, he has been making waves with his creative writing, world building and comedic timing as he shares his work with a fast growing community of loyal fans. And today, he honours the channel by sitting down with myself to answer mine and your questions. I am Crafty GG, and this is a very special episode of Roll for Discussion. I am joined this evening with fellow content creator, the GOAT, the King, Malafrex. Good evening, matey. Good evening. Thanks Thanks for having me on Roll for Discussion. I've been looking forward to this for a while, so I'm glad we finally got the chance to sit down and talk. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I was I was about to say thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be on this uh, small podcast. It really means a lot uh, to hear that you know um, that you you two are quite happy to be here, and it just proves that relentless stalking you know has its merits. <laughs> yeah, it does. I suppose that's true. Um, yeah, no, I actually uh, I've been a big fan of your channel since um, before I even started posting yours. You actually you started posting videos before I did, and um, yours was one of the channels that I watched as I was getting inspiration to start my own channel. That that is so awesome to hear. I I, I can't believe that. <laughs> That's so cool. Oh yeah. Oh. So oh, and I say around. Yeah. Back to here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because I mean, then you know, I I was I was doing it for a little while. I was I've got I've actually compiled a list. Um, of all the content creators that I can find that do or have done uh, presidents play D and D, um, and I was like one of the first few, at least on YouTube. I think uh, one of them, meme D and D dice. I think I say say it. I believe I think he started on TikTok before he went onto YouTube, but I've not actually looked into it to see when it was. So he might have been the very first one to do it, and then um. And then yeah, just as as the list like grew, we just started getting, you know, more and more uh, like brilliant creators. Not everyone obviously stuck around. A lot of people maybe did uh, one or two. Some maybe a few more than that. But there's only a small handful of us that have actually kept it going. You know, and it's just it's so great to see those that have like kept it going, like just where their like content has gotten to. And uh, yeah, and I saw yours like coming through. I started listening to it, and I was like, "Ah, oh, this is this is this is what I, this is what I'm looking forward to." Just so many different people with their own versions and how they want to like show their like their stories and dress it. And some people have gone for, you know, they followed modules. For instance, uh, Relic, I believe he's one. He went with the Curse of Strahd, and then there's others like yourself. They've gone for more like uh, homebrew, uh, same as like a uh, clone and AI guy. So it's it's just it's just so such a nice feeling just to just to sit back and just like see this expanse of uh, content creators and the list just keeps growing you know yeah and i think that's one of the really cool things is it's like you said in the intro it's a really uh, niche genre like there's only it's it's a small community of creators but it is growing and it's pretty cool to see everyone's different takes on presidential ai D. &D. oh yeah 100% Hundred percent. I'm. I'm glad. I mean, there are. You. You'll see as obviously as everyone's like content expands. You. You'll see that like there's similarities, uh, and such like that, which is it's kind of to be expected because there's you know there's only so much you're going to be able to do when you're trying to tell a story like with AI voices and like the president stuff. You're going to have some slightly overlapping or similar jokes. Um, you know, certain tropes that of course they they come into the part of the particular presidents. And stuff like that but it but again everyone has like something that's slightly unique about how they do theirs which i think gives the viewers you know such a nice variety to choose from because some people might like they might want to go for they just want to listen you know so there, there's plenty of there's plenty of guys who will they'll, they'll use like art and, and and such but the main focus is is it's easier for people they if they haven't 
got the ability to actually watch it or you know they're driving or working or something they can just listen to everything that goes on and then there are others that might have a more of a visual aspect to it so like, if they actually want to see like what goes on in the game and stuff so it's really nice and I'm, I'm quite excited as as time goes on to see what if you know when we get if there's going to be more content creators that come out of the woodwork and see what, how they try to show their versions off yeah yeah i, I definitely agree wholeheartedly with all of that yeah yeah i think those are some good points so um now we got the uh, uh the initial bit out of the way i have compiled a list of questions uh i'm gonna i'm gonna throw at you and then once we've gone through uh, what i've supplied i have gone and asked the community uh if they had any questions they wanted to ask you as well and we've got these from uh put a post on my youtube channel we got uh, loads of responses on that one uh, i got some response from on your discord group um and i got a few on my own so we'll start off with uh, with my ones and uh, yeah, that sounds great yeah fantastic and so the first one i have is so what is it that got you started that that wanted you to make this type of content and this and this sort of channel yeah so like a lot of people who um play dungeons and dragons i was in a group who uh let's just we weren't able to meet on a consistent schedule um i feel like that's happened with every single D D group that i've been a part of where people just get busy schedules are always in flux um and so it's hard to really sit down on a consistent schedule to play dungeons and dragons um and i was the dungeon master for this group and i had this whole overarching storyline which is what i made my channel off of um and then i started seeing some presidential ai content and i thought hey you know what i could make some videos for my players and then maybe that will get people like hyped they're like they think that it's pretty funny and cool and then we'll be able to start meeting more often um and then i posted them to youtube and um i did a bit of research at, on different channels as i was starting to write my own scripts like yours and clones and relicies were the main three that i found um i knew i was going to be entering the domains of dread so um relicies with he was doing curse of strahd and barovia um and then i liked your animation style um and then clone obviously he he was the first one who I feel like went viral with it on YouTube. Oh yeah. Um, and so I caught on to his were the first ones that I saw. Of it. And then as I looked into more, I started finding other creators. Um, but yeah, so it started off as just a passion project for my players. Um, and then I posted them to YouTube and then it, it grew from there. Oh, that's fantastic. That's, that's such a nice way of, uh, of like how to go about it. It's just to sort of keep that interest going. Like for your for your friends, you know, get them get them more motivated for it. I mean, it's, it's it's a nice way of looking at it. And uh, with the the kind of answers, what my next question was going to be is like how, about you playing D and D in in real life. Were you are you the forever uh, DM, or did you get a chance to be a player yourself? Yeah, for the most part, I'm the forever DM. Um, I am part of a D and D group right now. Um, that started over on my Discord channel, but it's um i i my schedule's been really busy and i've been pretty flaky on them um so i'm a player in that campaign um but most nine about 99 percent of the time i'm the dungeon master yeah yeah i i i, I, sh I share that as well i've been dming a, a homebrew campaign it's my it was actually my first uh campaign been going on for a little over a year now and it's it's only been really the last like couple of months where i've had to like reschedule like meeting up uh with the group and uh, we were we were quite consistent for a very long time it was like every other friday for for several months and it's just uh things this is like you said you know things get a little bit harder with the with the schedule and not everyone can be available so you gotta try and make time like whenever you can but i i i try to look at it as like well what, like when you get those moments when you do get everyone together then you gotta pull out all the stops you know and like really like give it your all just so like you can get that like really good experience and everyone can walk away i like, have thinking you know what that was a great that was a great session we just had definitely agreed yeah so um when you uh when you are a player what's your favorite type of build 
yeah, so I usually, um, so I've been a player in a couple of one shots on occasion, um, and I've always been a Leonel Blood Hunter. Oh. Um, yeah, so Leonel, I believe they printed it in one of the Plane Shift supplemental materials. Um, it might be in one of the new Magic the Gathering books as well. Um, but so it's just a, a lion based race. Mm. And then Blood Hunters is Matthew Merker's custom class. Yep. Uh, and so, yeah, I've always, that's just, that's been my go to classes. I'm a, a Leonel Blood Hunter. Nice. Um, yeah. So hopefully he might make an appearance in a future D&D video. That would be pretty cool. I've, uh, I, I would do the, I would do the same thing if I had the, um, if, my uh, group if we ever decide to actually put something together uh like on the channel i mean we've we've got some ideas that we're we're sort of putting together but again i would end up being the, the dm for it but if i had a chance for me i'd say uh, my my first ever one ever build is has always been my favorite a, 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 a hill dwarf barbarian just a, a particularly grumpy a grumpy fella <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a that's a good combo. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, when uh, when you are making these videos, so you did touch upon it a little bit about you looked into other channels uh, to sort of get inspiration. Uh, is there anything else that you look into to get inspiration? Um, yeah. So, hmm. I, I so D Dungeons and Dragons has been a big part of my life for. Um, probably the last eight years or so. Oh, wow. um, and in that time, I, I about 90% of the time I'm just using homebrew content. Um, and I, I've been writing in general since um, like middle school. Um, and so I feel like for inspiration, it's just kind of, um, you have high fantasy, things like Lord of the Rings are definitely an inspiration. Um, and then different books. Um I was a big fan of Name of the Wind, and I can't think of the second one now. Mm. Um, Patrick Rothfuss's books, um, and I, I would say that pretty much most of the content that I um, ingest is fantasy-based content, and so I just kind of draw inspiration from wherever I can from those. That's fantastic. All right, excellent. Um, so where I go. Go to the the videos themselves. Where if you if you give us a sort of like a rundown from concept to upload, what's the the sort of process that you go through when you make a video? Sure. Um, so let me think. We can start off with. Um, I think Call of Cthulhu would be a good one for me to show my process on, where. It started off as um, somebody had left a comment on one of my videos saying, hey, you should do the Call of Cthulhu system. That'd be pretty cool to see. Um, and that was kind of in the back of my mind for a while, but I was pretty invested in the Dungeons & Dragons campaign um, until I hit a bit of writer's block with that. So then I started looking more into Call of Cthulhu. Um, I found another cool series on YouTube. Um, it was a Call of Cthulhu playthrough, um, and I really fell in love with the system. I think it's... Honestly, it might even be my favorite system above even Dungeons & Dragons now. Um, and so I started thinking about how I could make a presidential AI video based off of that. Um, I knew I wanted to do something homebrew, but I wanted to pull inspiration from established modules since um, they lay a lot of the groundwork for it. So I came up with um, my town, Dunsmith. And then um, the cult, which was Children of the Void, and an enemy, which um, I was a big fan of the board game Mansions of Madness, and they're called Deep Ones. It's kind of like frog-type creatures. Um, and so I knew that I had a couple of those components, and then I just started playing through as if it was an actual Call of Cthulhu campaign. Um, thinking from the perspective of each of my characters, the presidents, and like what they would do if they were put into the different situations and circumstances. Um, it definitely makes it a lot easier if you're actually rolling the dice, since yeah. 
that determines the story for you. I'm sure you're familiar with that experience as well. You don't you don't have to make all the decisions because the dice are there. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And then um, I used yeah Mid Journey to help me generate all of the art, um, going through scene by scene, and thinking what's key things about this scene that I could try to um, get a background for, um, and then just kind of put it all together and throw it out there. Um, once inspiration hits, I feel like it, it, I, I can write pretty fast once the inspiration hits. Um, so like Call of Cthulhu, I believe it took me like six days to make the whole movie. Um, and I just um, had the inspiration that I wanted and um, then played the game from there and saw where my characters took me. Wow. I, and only in six days. How many hours a day would you say you probably put in on average? Um, for Call of Cthulhu, it was probably somewhere from uh, probably about four hours a day. Um, so I work from eight to five. Um, so it was just my evenings were um, dedicated to writing Call of Cthulhu, <laughs> and then I spent all day that Saturday. Um, probably starting around nine o'clock and finishing that night i'm um, doing the voice translation and the um editing and trying to put it all together um and i don't think i think i waited a week to post it on the following sunday but it's it's almost like because there's there's a lot of um I'm, I'm hearing a lot of like uh similarities there with like with how much time to put in to make uh, the video it's it, it can almost it's almost like having a, a second job at times isn't it like with the, just the number oh, yeah. the amount of hours that you end up having to, to put into it the the upside is though uh, is, is as long as you've got a passion for it, it it never feels like you're working you know what i mean right exactly yep yep yeah. and yeah watching your videos yeah just your animation skills are definitely leaps and bounds ahead of mine and yeah i just it's very impressive that you're able to do the level of animations that you're able to do um you definitely have a lot more skill and experience in that arena than me um and yeah so i, I think it's really impressive how you're able to do that as much animation as you do thank you it's it's, it's very kind of you to say so uh the, the the first campaign obviously was uh very heavy on the animation it's why the videos were as short as they were because just making a, a four minute video uh, I'd be doing probably about four to five hours a day for a, a solid week just to yep. just to get them and a lot of it I found over time it was it was more just trial and error that was taken up it was I never really uh, secured down like a a proper process on how to put them together so I had so much like obviously you you would have to you have to build everything in layers and you got you got to try to get it all syncing up correctly and all the rest of it and i i just found a lot of the time what i was i was doing i'd go over maybe 30 seconds and i'd, I'd set up what i'd want to do but i find that i'd make a slight error in something and it wasn't so easy to sort of just pull back a little bit and go right okay just make this slight tweak you end up having to redo the whole thing and then you're watching it and every time you've made just a slight adjustment i'm going back to the beginning watching the whole thing and i just a lot of the time i was just sort of kept constantly trying to fix errors and such and it was it was a lot of fun but i i, I admit i had i've had i had no training on how to how to do animation like I, everything i did there was self-taught it was i started off really basic that's why like you see like the first videos and stuff like they're not actually moving <laughs> they're, just, they're just simple pngs and then as as time went on right. i was like right okay i want him to sort of go from left to right like how could i do that and then and i just sort of worked from there and i just wanted to get started getting crazier and they started doing more stuff but it, each time i wanted to make more of it it if just by making an extra 30 seconds of animation you, you're looking at another two three days of like editing yeah and I, obviously as, as time goes on I, I was getting better but i i found it it was because it was so consuming just doing the animation i kind of felt like I, I was dropping the ball on things like the 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 storytelling the actual playing the D and stuff like that so as much as i i, I loved my 
all the work that I had done for it, it, it didn't feel like it was like it, it didn't feel like it, it was the best day it could be. And so I decided I'm um, I will have uh, there's one more video I am going to do just to wrap it up. Uh, it'll probably be quite a long one, but it is going to take uh, a long time to do. But that's why I thought, right, well, I want to I want to do a, a proper campaign. And a little bit of animation will be fine, but I, I wanted to tone that back a little bit just so that I could actually focus on making it a and d story I'd actually be quite, you know, pleased with. So there's, there's, there's right. where you wouldn't see, you won't see as much animation in this one. There's just like some effects and stuff, but other than that, I've toned, I'm, I'm keeping it deliberately toned down so that I can at least flesh out the, the rest of it, as it were. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that makes sense. Mm. Um, yeah, I was impressed still with your the battle map from your last episode. I think it was your last one. I oh, might yeah. have missed one. Um, the I thought one the with the dragon? And, yeah, the yeah. one with the dragon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, just the one you posted yesterday, or day before. Um, yeah, I just thought that the battle animation is impressive. I know uh, Relic, he did those a lot, um, but he hasn't posted in quite a while. And I just thought that, yeah, you did a great job making all the characters move in unison when and linking it up to the audio. Um, yeah, definitely just did a phenomenal job with that video. Thank you very much. Yeah, that, that so that, that has all come from all the trial and error with like the first campaign. That's why I... Yeah, I, 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 it, the the maps were the thing that I I loved the most. So when I first saw you, you called him Relic. I, I thought it was pronounced uh, Relic. <laughs> um, uh, it, it probably is Relic. Well, I, I don't I don't know how it's pronounced. Well, Relic, if if you're watching this, Bonnie Charles, could you just clarify it for us, please? Or oh, viewers, what? How do you think it's pronounced? Is it Relic or Relicy? Post down below. Let us know. And um, but when I saw when I first saw how he had done his videos that's i think gave me the the sort of initial like spark of inspiration i was like oh i i, I just fell in love with how his setup was and then i also was seeing ai guy when he uh was doing a couple of like battles like he had done his battle map and i love the overlays which showed each character and then when it went from one character to another on the right hand side like you would show it show all their stats and stuff and i was like this is this this is what i really want to do stuff like that you know and uh, yeah just it just sort of spawned from there so i and then I, I also had inspiration from from yourself and from clone that's why i always put all four of you uh, in each of my descriptions on these videos because my inspiration to not only just to like the work itself but the it sort of helps drive me forward to make a better content you know, I see the effort that you guys all put in. Um, I see the the love that you all get from your fans, uh, the admiration. And I just think, you know what? That's it's 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 seeing stuff like that that makes me think. You know, I push me. It's going to drive me to make that better content. So uh, to hear you, to hear you say, you know, how much you liked it. All that's it. It really does mean a lot. It mean it means it's working. It means the work is paying off. Yeah, yeah. I definitely think your work is paying off. <laughs> yeah, I, I think yeah, I've really liked the Tyranny of Dragons campaign so far. It it's funny because it's a module that it, it's one of the ones that I've looked into the least, so I don't really know what's going to happen, um, which makes it feel like a nice surprise as I'm watching your videos too. Yeah, yeah, it's one that I've I've thought about a lot. I've only ever given it ever brief readings over. I've never been able to play for it properly, so this is a great way for me to to at least experience it in some way, you know. So, um, yeah, I'm really, I'm really pleased with it, and I'm, I'm hoping that by, by the time I'm done, or maybe even sooner, I'll, I'll have a group uh, together and we'll start actually playing through this. But um, uh, right, moving on to uh, the next question. Uh, so obviously we're just talking about obviously our work and uh, how much time it takes to put in and stuff like that, and I was just bringing up about you know there were some things I wasn't too pleased with my previous campaign. Um, if you could point to something uh, within the own work that you do, is there anything in there that you look back and you think there's something that I would want to improve upon or maybe add for like future content? Is there anything like that? Um, I think the biggest thing for me, um, so obviously animation is one that I'm 
constantly trying to do just a little bit more of um, in each new video that I'm doing. Um, but I think the thing that I have the hardest trouble with and that I'm the least satisfied with overall is the quality of the AI voices. Oh. Um, I feel like I just have a really hard time fine-tuning the voices to be what I want them to be. Oh, yeah. um, and at the end of the day, I just go, all right, well, it's it's good enough. I spent you know an hour trying to manipulate these audio clips, to try to get it just better. And um, so I'd say that that's the thing that I want to improve on the most in future President AI videos is the quality of my voices and how accurate they are. Yeah, yeah, no, I assure you, Payne, I, I have literally sat at my desk for like an hour with with just like a handful of sentences and I, I, I am pulling my beard apart because <laughs> just what yep. the how they're how they're saying and I'm, and I'm trying every trick I can like trying to make sure I'm like as grammatically correct as I can be or just change a little bit here and there and it just and sometimes like they, they might start the sentence off like really good and then they start getting quiet and I'm like and by the end of it it's like why are they whispering like what yeah but they were supposed to be yelling <laughs> yeah yep i i feel like that's probably a pain that most content creators in the ai space are familiar with is yeah it just the voices can just fall apart at random moments in time and then you just have to rework it and go over it again and again until it's <laughs> it's finally good enough <laughs> and it, it it doesn't make sense why it happens. I don't know all of the technology that goes. I know there's a lot of things. I use Eleven Labs. I don't know for sure which AI voice generator you use, but Eleven I know Labs. that there's a lot of talented software developers working on it and trying to make it better. But yeah, the voices just randomly fall apart at times, and there's just nothing you can do about it. <laughs> yeah, I, I also I uh, I use Eleven Labs as well, uh, and it, it's it's good, but. One thing I wish I, I I'm really hoping that it'll it'll come in a future update is to get to somehow get the voices to actually laugh, you know. Like, oh, I did actually see. I found a post by them saying that laughter was coming later this year. Oh, excellent! Or, so I don't know if that's still on the table. I I'd have to look more into that, but. Um, I did see a post on their site because I was also trying to figure out laughing. And yeah, it's just laughing is a pain. You can't get them to laugh. <laughs> no. the, sometimes I, I found when, um, if I, if I want them just to sound like they're exhaling or something, uh, that, that I find I sometimes get some of the funniest responses. I, I should, re I really should just like keep some of these samples and then just like play them as like a, a goof episode is like this, this is what they could sound like if i just let them on their first attempt and the noises that come out of them it's it's honestly it's like they're demonically possessed or something it is yeah <laughs> yeah that, that would be funny if we if the ai content creators created blooper reels of <laughs> what the voices sometimes generate <laughs> i would watch those yeah but... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so um we've uh, we've touched upon it a little bit. Uh so in your in your downtime when you if you're not like making videos, you're not studying, if you're not working, uh which other president D and D channels uh, do you watch enjoy watching in your spare time and uh why is it Crafty GG? <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> um I do watch Crafty GG. Um so I do actually have a uh, kind of a self-imposed rule so I, I can only i only watch and it's not right now i'm working on non-president ai content so it's not as big of a deal but i only watch other creators after right after i post my own videos mm -hmm. um, mainly because i don't want to um, accidentally steal from another like content creator i don't know how to put that properly but um like I have my specific tones that I want for each of my characters mm -hmm. and I don't want to slip into how another AI content creator does their characters instead. Yeah. That's, un that's completely um, understandable. Yeah. So I have a couple, I have probably like a two day gap after I post a video where I'll go and just kind of binge watch a lot of the other creators. Um, mainly it's yours. I I'm really far behind on, um, 
clones. Hmm. I don't actually know where I'm at on clones. Um, and the AI guy. I'm a fan of the AI guy as well. Oh yeah, I as I say, I really, I really like where his story's going at the moment. Uh, if anyone's watching below that hasn't has caught up, won't give any spoilers. Just let's just say it's he he has a knack for cliffhangers. That man. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> um, and then President Ashenheart is oh yeah a pretty good one. He has the female politicians play D and D, um, and Coco Mimi, who is pretty new. Um, her stuff, I I'm. Or their stuff. I'm, I'm a bit behind on their stuff as well. Um, I think I finished the first two episodes. But, um, yeah, so pretty much I watched most, I would say most of the other AI D&D content creators. Um, Have you seen... Um... Most crafty GG. <laughs> Have you seen... Uh, he's already been doing a lot of... Uh, AI president stuff, but he's quite recently gone into D and I think it's I think the channel's AI president's chat, and he's the one who does Pokemon D and D. Um, I have not watched this. Nope. Uh, he's I will have to add him to my list. Hey, right. he's uh he's done he's done two so far, and yeah, really nice, gotcha. great style. It's all like pixelated and stuff, and yeah, it's just really nicely done. Uh, yeah, I highly recommend giving it a try. But uh, you, you touched upon Coco Mini. Maybe that was actually going to be part of my next question. So you have directly inspired them to make President D&D. I believe they even they credit you in their opening video. And I've, I've seen people in like comment sections and stuff who have said, you know, and even when the post I put up uh, the other day, you know, there were people there saying, you know, it's because of yourself that, you know, that's got them into D&D and playing. And, when when you know stuff when you when you know about stuff like that, how does how does that make you feel knowing that you're their source of inspiration? Yeah, so that's definitely a really good feeling. Um, like I said, Dungeons and Dragons has been a big part of my life for the past um, eight eight or so years, um, and I just think that it presents a great opportunity for people to connect with other people, um, especially people who might not be the most social. Um, outside of Dungeons and Dragons, can really come to life in Dungeons and Dragons. Um, most of the groups that I've made have been with all new people to who haven't played Dungeons and Dragons before, um, and I, I really think that um, it's an amazing hobby that more people should be into. Oh, hundred percent. Um, and so to know that I'm inspiring people to play Dungeons and Dragons is really really cool, for sure. Oh yeah. I, I I when I I saw Coco's um, when I saw the first episode and they straight away you know they're giving you a shout for the source pressure. I just thought you know that's that that there is beautiful. That to know that especially again also when we when you know yourself and me we we know how much sort of work it is to to put these sort of videos together and they you've done enough for. For, for that person to turn around and go, you know what, I'm going to give that a try as well. And they're, they're becoming very successful very quickly. And it's just, especially I believe they even mentioned that they don't have a whole lot of D&D experience itself. So again, it's even more impressive, you know, and I think that's, that's one of the things I, I love the most, I think, when it comes to all this. Is, you know, the whole, the, the, the whole thing was a meme to begin with. Uh, I, I, yep. I I had a friend of mine who was a bit skeptical when I first told him that oh this is what I'm going to start like making on the channel and he's like well it's just a meme it's going to die off in a couple of weeks I was like possibly but the fact that it's based around D and D if you're try to be if you try to be um, what's the word uh, if you try to be respectful of the source material and you try to actually play an actual game. I said, yeah, you know, the meme's got to maybe bring in that initial atten uh, attention. But over time, you should then build up a core audience that are enjoying it, not just for the fact that it's, you know, it's comical that these these full-grown, very old men are <laughs> playing Dungeons & Dragons, <laughs> but it's the fact that it is Dungeons & Dragons, you know, and you, you're more likely to get more fans of D&D. &D. And oh, I'm so pleased to, you know, six months on, that it's all still going strong, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's definitely pretty incredible. I think that is um, one of the 
coolest things about all the AI stuff is it's presented the opportunity for um, people to uh, share Dungeons and Dragons stories in a format where it has a lot more exposure, yeah. um, which I think is really cool. Yeah, I, it's, I, it's, it's just brilliant. Honestly, I, I talk for days of just my admiration of how, how much this has sort of spread the joy of D and D. Agree. Yep. So um, yeah, it's yep. <laughs> so let's say uh, someone might be listening uh, right now that wanted to start a channel just like Coco did. Um, what advice would you give them if let's say that they they didn't know where to even begin on this sort of thing like what how would what yeah i'm going I'm, my words are going all over the place what advice would you give them <laughs> yeah i i think one of the things that can help most for creating a dnd channel like ones that we've made is honestly just playing dungeons and dragons with your friends or even just with people i know the the discord community for the dungeons and dragons group is really big and has a lot of opportunities for people to hop into campaigns um and i think just as you start to play dungeons and dragons um especially if you're a dungeon master but also if you're a player then your mind can just kind of wander to what if or how would obama react in this situation or how could um ben shapiro i don't know why ben shapiro is in so many of them um he is but um yeah so he kind of gets lumped in there too um <laughs> and so you just start thinking how can these people how would these people react if they're put and playing in this type of situation um and i think it all just kind of starts with playing dungeon to dragon and seeing how the gameplay works yeah it's pretty solid i uh to sort of go on what you say there about with ben shapiro ben shapiro i i think it's it's just how iconic his voice is you know, you yeah know. yeah yeah that, that's probably it yep <laughs> he's and he just he, he has just has this serious look on his face all the time and then this like tiny squeaky voice like, comes out and he talks about you know 100 miles a second <laughs> just <laughs> and even people who don't yeah. really know much about him like in america especially if you've got any kind of concept on, on political on anything political more than likely you've heard his name or you've heard his voice you know or you've seen a clip where he's been brought up in some way or another and it's just i don't know he just yeah it's it's really weird of of all the things like with president's play just ben shapiro like what <laughs> yeah he just he just fits yeah he fits very well into the group yeah <laughs> because and he's just very iconic so uh, yep <laughs> So, um, so people obviously you you got a lot of fans here. They 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 love your your D and D uh, stories that you've been doing, and but you've also branched out into other games such as Call of Cthulhu and Root. So, what was it that made you want to expand past D and D? Yeah, so it, it's always kind of been something on um, on my mind a bit is the fact that. Like, there are a lot of tabletop role-playing systems out there. Um, there's Call of Cthulhu, Root, Warhammer has their own, Empire of the Masquerade has their own, I believe Alien has their own. Um, and I think that Dungeons & Dragons, has awesome as it is, does have... Like, I don't think it's the system for everybody. Um, and I've also just been a fan of kind of gothic horror and Call of Cthulhu just kind of fit right into there. Um, and it was just kind of a learning experience for me as well. Um, so yeah, I, I, I think, like I mentioned, I think Call of Cthulhu is my favorite tabletop role-playing system at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, and then Root, I found um, just on accident, I was in a game store and I saw a little book there for Root the RPG. Um, and I had played the board game before and thought, oh, wow, they, they made an RPG based off that. That would be pretty cool. Um, and I just, yeah, I made a video off of it. And um, yeah, it's just, I think that Dungeons and Dragons is awesome as it is. There are a lot of other awesome systems out there that might fit some people better. Yeah, I, I think it was, a, it was a really clever move uh, to do because you've obviously you've built up that core audience that are enjoying the the D and D, 
and then it's a great way to sort of uh, an opportunity to sort of show them like these are the other sort of tabletop rpgs that you know that are available uh, i had never heard of root and i i watched your one and as a side note i love this the style of it like the the characters are like sort of like popsicle sticks and uh popsicle sticks and uh just the the the, the imagery that you had used for it and then the, the game itself like I, i've watched it a couple of times because i'm trying to understand like how to how would actually go about playing it and i just think it was a really cool idea because it was a great way to again just as i said you know introduce people to new types of tabletop rpgs yeah root definitely so it's based off of the overall system called powered by the apocalypse um but yeah i just think that it's it's a lot simpler in some ways but also you kind of need more materials right in front of you um yeah it's definitely a unique system and root itself um i wanted to make the video feel different which is why i did the popsicle stick art um which i just it just kind of fit the overall theme i thought um the getting the ai to generate those was pretty tough to do um but yeah it's definitely I, i've just had a blast making these other non D D videos as well um and i do have plans for more uh, um to showcase some other systems as well in the future too uh yeah we'll be uh we'll, we're gonna come back to that uh in a moment but i've got uh just a couple more before we get to that one so with president D D, we've obviously established it's a, it's a very niche kind of genre where where do you where would you like to see it go sorry you... oh sorry am i did i break up a bit there yeah it sounds right. like you're better now all right let me try that again so we've already established that president D D is a very niche genre where would you like to see it go what sort of direction would you like to see it go in the in the near future yeah so i think that um one of the coolest things I, th I think it has a long way to go before it can get to this point um but i would love to see like uh I don't know how realistic it is again. I'd love to see like an actual truly um, like Legend of Vox Machina style of mm. presence play D&D. I, I think that that would be hilarious. I think I, I, I don't I, I think you'd have to have money and the proper um, team behind doing something like that. Oh, yeah. Um, but I do think that that would just be awesome. Um, I don't think AI movies are anywhere near the point where they'll be able to do something like that anytime soon um but i think that it would just be awesome to see like a fully animated president's play D, &D oh video. yeah yeah you definitely would want to know you'd need a full team of animators to, to, to pull that off i mean i can't i i've just i've wanted something really basic at the moment with with aar it's just so like say for instance i just get like uh trump's character um, as in my one as the, as the Goliath Barbarian, I'd like to be able to get the AAR to show me uh, front and the back, so that if there's like scenes where he's got his back facing, it would be you look at it, and it's still the same like artwork, and like again like side views as well, just so that I could I could put the characters in sort of different angles and stuff, and it just be it work better like for like future ideas it's one of the biggest problems i had with the first campaign and i had to the only way i could sort of fix that was by um uh like making them like silhouettes to give the impression like this is the back of them sort of thing but to, yeah yep. but to go like full animation that would be that would be uh yeah that would be, that'd be amazing or if you get them I, I know you can do this with uh I don't, I don't know how it gets done but i've seen uh, someone gets it where they got the image and they can actually get the mouths to move and they and they talk the the motion in the face is always the sort of the same it's sort of like they're looking forward and their head kind of tilts and they head tilts and stuff. it's a lot of those balenciaga videos uh were doing a lot of that do you, you know the ones i'm talking about yeah i do yeah i believe yeah there are software where you can plug in speech and it animates like a face hmm. um and I, I do think that that's a, a step in the right direction for sure. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think that just seeing more progress along those fronts will be really cool to see in the in the future. Yeah. Uh, well, with the progress of AI, in uh, obviously in some circles, AI is considered uh, could be considered quite controversial. I mean, we, 
talked about with the D and D communities. I've I'm in several on like Facebook and such, and I've seen that when someone posts uh, an image and they're like, "Oh yeah, I got this from um, uh, what's the AI art generator you use?" I use Mid Journey. Yeah, sorry, Mid Journey or Imagine or something or another. The 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 amount of hatred that comes from people about it, I say, "Oh, you're stealing work from artists." And stuff, and then there was the the whole actors strike thing that had been going on because the, you're saying you know, AI is taking away jobs and that sort of thing. Um, what, what are your thoughts on this whole thing with AI as a whole? Because I mean, we well, obviously we use it to, to make comedy, like D and D stuff. You know, it, anyone's listened to it knows that okay, that's not really Trump. You know, so it's not like it's worried about what he's going to say, but just like just. Yeah, in, in some circles, it just it seems to just generate a lot of like ill feeling. Yeah, I, I definitely think that there's a lot of um, moral ambiguity with AI art. I was I feel like I see it most with AI art, mm -hmm. just in general, the whole AI space. Um, I I think that it's I I don't think it's quite a black and white issue. Um, yeah. I think one of the most amazing things about AI is that it's put the power to create things like what we're creating into the hands of people who don't have funding to go out and get a team of people to do all of these different things, right? Oh, yeah. Um, like, if it wasn't for Midjourney being able to generate a character for um, Donald Trump as a barbarian or whatever, then um, I wouldn't have been able to make, like, any of my videos, right? Yeah. Um, and I don't think that I ever would have had the upfront funding to go out and hire an artist and be like, all right, so here's my vision. Um, and then to go out and hire voice actors and be like, all right, so I want you to pretend to be this person. Yeah. Um, like we, we don't have the funding or uh, availability of people like Critical Role. Um, but I think that AI has handed those tools to people who don't have access to those, which I think is awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm on the downside of go on, carry on. Yep, on on the downside of things, I, I think that um, it is taking away jobs from artists, and um, it was a big sticking point in the writers and actor strike was artificial intelligence, and I think that there is definitely um, things that need to be figured out with in regards to the legality of certain things, um, like whether it's um, AI art generators need to pay artists in order to use their art to train the models. Um, but the downside to that is that it does pass off those costs to people who want to use that software, um, which makes it so that less people can get into it. So I, I, I think that it's just a really tricky subject um, and a tricky ethical and moral dilemma. Um, I, I don't think that true AI um, replacing these industries is something that will happen in the near future. Um, like, I don't think AI movies, the ones that I've seen, I think that they still have a long, long ways to go before they can replace anything that Hollywood does type thing. Um, so, yeah. I, I don't really know. I think I kind of go back and forth on it. Yeah. What, yeah. what about you? What are your thoughts on AI as a whole? So I, I think it's it, it's kind of like with, <clears throat> it's like with anything new that comes in when, if it makes such a big impact, like the initial, the initial one, there's a lot of, there's a lot of fear, you know, it's kind of like when, uh, uh, so over in England, when we had uh, miners, being like shut down uh people talk about you know you know, losing their jobs and stuff but then more job opportunities become available over time it might not have been the best example uh but my point is is that when something comes in and has such a such an impact that it's going to create change i think mean, yes there are there are going to be positions that are going to not be available but then as things adapt new positions and new opportunities also become available and it, it you have this sort of period of time where there's going to be a lot of trial and error to try to get to the point kind of like what you were saying with um 
you know, they might have to start paying like the artists, uh, which, which I th- to be honest, I think is is a fair is a fair shout if they're using art from an artist. I think uh, at the very least there should be credit. If not, then there should be some sort of payment for it. That artist is the one who's obviously done the work for. Uh, so I, I think I think we'll get to a point where there can be a fair balance. It's just it's one of those things where it's just going to take it's going to take a bit of time before we get there. Yeah, yeah, hmm. I definitely agree. So you mentioned uh, about new projects that you've actually recently uh, announced a new project that you're working on. What can you tell us about it? Obviously, I know you, you probably don't want to give away spoilers or anything. Don't want to, don't want to ruin it. Don't want to ruin anything yet. So, but what what could you tell us about it, if anything? Yeah. So this new project that I'm working on, um, it's. So I, I think that there is a large area of potential for AI entertainment that's um, not in the president's space. So this new project doesn't involve the presidents at all. Um, and I don't think that it will do quite as well on YouTube for the algorithm and stuff, but it's been a lot of fun to make. Um, so it's a mockumentary style project focusing on members of a cult in um, Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, and so I, I'm pretty excited for it. Um, it's airing next Friday, so a week from tomorrow. I posted the trailer earlier today. Um, and I, I, I'm, I'm interested to see what people's reactions to it are. Um, I did get, I sent it out to some test people and uh, I'm optimistic where it's going. Um, it is more ambitious on AI voices than anything I've done so far. Um, so I'm a bit nervous there. It's always kind of nerve wracking trying out new content, I feel like, um, and a new style. But I'm hopeful that and people will see the potential that I see in it. So I'm still definitely planning on doing more President's content in the future. Um, This is just kind of a a break from that type of content for me for now. All right, excellent. uh, I'm really looking forward to actually seeing it. Uh, Just a bit of detail there you gave. uh, I'm I'm very interested now. Uh, Next, it's coming out, you said Friday, next week. Uh, Yep, next Friday. That's when I that's when I do my my that's when I do my D and D campaign. <laughs> what uh, wait what uh, what time? Next Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> what what uh, time? Let's see. Uh, right now it's scheduled for um, a time. Where oh, here it is. Right now I have it scheduled for nine a.m. Mountain Standard Time. I don't know what time that is for you. Ah, no, that's perfect. That's 4 p.m. my time. That's, uh, I guess, yeah, no, there's plenty of time. Ha <laughs> There you go. Excellent. I will and be it's there. Only, it's only a 15-minute um, episode. So, um, but I'm planning on posting on Fridays. Um, it's going to be at least a six-episode season. Um, and then depending on what people are thinking of it, I might continue it past that point. Um, but so, yeah, it'll just be every Friday for the next couple of weeks fantastic i'm looking forward to it well then uh so those are all of my questions and as i mentioned earlier i've reached out uh to the community asking yeah your fans and uh, see if, what they come back with so to start off with we've got a few that are these are quite similar uh this one is zero one zero one zero one one zero don't know what that means but hopefully i just didn't swear in binary uh, uh, what does your writing process look like? The go-to AI presidents have such distinct personalities, which uh, you are then adding a layer of, but what would their fantasy character do? It sounds incredibly hard, but I would love to know. Yeah, so I think, honestly, it, it sounds a bit harder than it actually is. Um, and I think it's hard to get started with it. Um but once you've written a bit of a character, it just kind of starts um, almost like auto-completing, in my mind at least, of what the, how that character would react um, to the different situations. Um, so yeah, it just goes with, um, as I'm writing, I try to make sure that everyone um, 
has like the different presidents have their own spotlight moments um and if i feel like one isn't talked for a while then i'll have them talk next um and just asking like the person asked um what would their fantasy character do um and i feel like it just kind of starts to flow after you've been writing it for a while excellent so uh, we have one here from low man dude Again, it's quite similar. My question is, what is your writing process for videos for characters like Ben Shapiro and, of course, the other presidents? Uh, it's pretty much the same sort of question, I think, by looks of that one. Uh, yeah, so, yep, I just, I, I write out a scenario. Usually it's Ben describing a situation and then describe how the characters respond. Um, Timeline-wise, I usually spend... Um, Monday through Friday um, working and reworking a script and then editing it on Saturday and then posting it on Sunday. Okay, fantastic. And again from the 01010110, what does it look like to make an episode, specifically the shorter episodes, since it seemed like it was your preferred writing process? Yeah, so I kind of go back and forth on my preferred writing process. Um, I, I, I really enjoy writing the full movies like I've done for... Um, I did that for Root and both Call of Cthulhu's and um, the fourth D&D movie, I believe. Hmm. Yeah, the fourth one. Or the third one. Nope, the fourth one. <laughs> um, yeah, one of them. <laughs> I wrote where it was just, just the movie. Um, and so pretty much it's just... Um, an, unhealthy obsession of um consistently and constantly writing until i hit a writer's block ball um and then once i get back to it just um repeating that process of ben describing a scenario and then the other people responding to it yeah fantastic um james meow three zero three nine what other AI voices would you like to see play D and D? SpongeBob, Resident Evil, etc. So I've always thought that it'd be really cool to see um, different TV shows um, AI voices. Like um, for a while, I was working on writing um, the third D and D episode of Community. Um, is going to be my spinoff, where it was the cast of Community playing dungeons and dragons again um that one it's tough to write I, obviously i i think that the people who wrote the episodes are a lot lot more skilled than i am at writing those types of things um and they have access to a lot more tools and stuff um so but i think that that would be hilarious put it out there if anyone no wants to do it um i think it'd be funny to see the avengers play D D or um <laughs> the cast of the office play dungeons and dragons um, i do think that there there could be some potential legality issues in some of the spaces um uh, potentially not I, i'm not i'm not a lawyer of any sort um but that was one of the things that stopped me from doing the avengers playing DD was <laughs> worried about legality issues um i do think that those things would be hilarious and would be a funny extension of the ai president space yeah. i tell you there's one thing i've quite enjoyed about the ai guy is that he has gone through a bit of a range of uh different of different voices like over the over the space of the campaign and it's quite nice just to see the the different variations you know definitely yep uh kirby theo taku 737 when will the new president D, &D movie be released yeah, so I'm hoping sometime soon. Um, I've found really with my writing process that I have a near impossible time writing on something when I'm not feeling the inspiration to be writing on that. Um, so that's the reason why I'm doing this mockumentary series next is because that's where I got some inspiration to be writing. Um, I, I am definitely still planning on going back and finishing both the D and D campaign and the call of Cthulhu movie series. Um, yeah. I'm just not quite sure on a timeline for when that's going to be. Oh, fair enough. I mean, that answers, um, uh, observer, 
orb server when are you going to uh, return to uh, back to making videos especially call of cthulhu so just uh, got over what well, we just explained there what's going on with that one elder god uzac is he going to be making a new episode of the dnd series and then sir aaron game guy when is mal's next video coming out well uh, we've already established that that's going to be next friday so next friday 9 a.m mst uh, observer what made you start on making ai dnd presence videos uh, what was your drive to keep going? Because I enjoy your committed on it. Yeah, so um, like I mentioned a bit earlier, it started out as um, just kind of a passion project where I was remaking my currently running Dungeons & Dragons campaign um, with AI president. Um, and then it just kind of spiraled past that. Um, the channel grew a lot more than I was expecting it to. And... So I just, I, I kept making content for it. Um, I think one of my biggest drives is that it was helping people discover Dungeons & Dragons, um, which I just think is a really cool thing about these types of videos. Oh yeah, 100%. Uh, Drill Lablo, question for both of you. Do you watch movies, TV shows, and read books to get inspiration, or does something pop in your head that sounds cool and you roll with it? No pun intended. Well, do you want to answer the one first? It's for both of us. Uh, it is for both of us, but yeah, sure, I'll give it a, give it a go. Um, so for me, I, I grew up um, playing RPGs, not the tabletop ones. That I've only I only got into that about a year or so ago. It was uh, I grew up on Final Fantasy, uh, Pokemon, just a lot of turn-based RPG uh, uh, video games, and I, I watched a lot of fantasy movies growing up. Uh, Matter of fact, mentioned Lord of the Rings. You know, I absolutely love that. Uh, and it's just, uh, I also watch. Uh, I love, I love comedy. So I love uh, watching all all different uh, types. American comedy, I've, I've, I thoroughly enjoy. I grew up obviously on on British comedy, which is it could be a very different kind of style. And then uh, over the last couple of years. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how much this might insult uh, people, but I found some of the best comedy was listening to uh, president politics. That is sometimes I found that has been comedy gold to listen to these guys uh, hey. arguing. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so I <Yeah. laughs> honestly, if I have offended any viewers, I do apologize. I don't intend to. <laughs> Trust me, your your politics is so much more entertaining than British politics. It is a dull fest over here. There's no yeah, passion. It's, it's not always in a good way on our side. But <laughs> it is always entertaining. <laughs> the, yeah. So when when I first started like putting the the videos together, I just kept going back. Like I was going back to like certain clips i was like oh what's that thing he said and i like i look it up and be like yes like that's good i like that that's funny <laughs> <laughs> yep <laughs> but uh what about yourself yeah so i i think it, it's kind of a combination of all of them um sometimes it'll just pop in my head or like i just found that root book and i thought that would be cool um for this current one um i've been watching through the office again um just while i'm working on a school project i'll usually have it playing in the background mm. um and so that was one of my main inspirations for this one um or let me think i watched some of the like classic horror movies and so that inspired some of my um upcoming content as well um but sometimes it'll just kind of pop in my head. Um, my D and D campaign is one that um, just kind of popped in my head as I was um, reading about some stuff, and then I just kind of rolled with it ever since. Yeah, that's pretty good. I didn't actually actually answer him about that about the pop in the head. So when I actually look at putting an episode together, I I, I say for instance I've I've uploaded the the latest one. The, for the next day or two, I won't actually do anything on the computer. I'll just think about what happened in the episode and sort of try to imagine, a bit like what, what Mel's been saying, is that sort of just sort of imagine how would the characters sort of react now to what's happened. 
and then just sort of build it from there and a lot of times there is it is just sort of ideas sort of pop in the head and i'll play around with it i do find that my scripts do change quite a lot from what they originally are because I, I get the idea i start writing it out i start playing the voices and then afterwards i'm sort of like yep yeah, equivalent of like scrunching up a piece of paper and throwing it in the bin it's like nope let's redo that <laughs> so sometimes the ideas stick and other times i just sort of think like oh my god what am i what am i even thinking why did i even think that was good get rid of it <laughs> yep definitely gone through that before <laughs> um yeah i've i've had to throw away yeah full episodes because um i didn't like where the episode after that one went mm. so i had to toss out both of them and start from scratch <laughs> uh N- new lonistic new lonistic what was your experience like during the maui fi- uh, wildfires yeah so while we were in maui we got there just a couple days before all the fires broke out um and we were lucky enough we were staying in a part that wasn't um directly affected by fires um but definitely just really heartbreaking for all of the people there um people just lost everything um and then we're just kind of standing there as as tourists um so we kind of just tried to stay out of the way we stayed in our hotel room most of the time while everything was going down um and making sure that um like we kept checking the emergency broadcast stuff to make sure that we weren't uh in a danger or anything like that um and then we flew out a couple days after that so Definitely, just heartbreaking for the people in Maui, for sure. Yeah, I, I honestly, I, I could, I couldn't even imagine what what it must be like for some, for some of these people that have gone through these these disasters. Like we've quite recently, there's been quite a lot of earthquakes and such like that, and you just think, you know, Sorry, I kind of cut out on my side. As I was saying about uh, recently, you know, there's been uh, earthquakes going on in other countries, uh, just like just what the local people have had to part with, you know. We, when the the Maui fires were going on over here, they're doing all these reports, and they they all they kept showing were videos of all these people that were stuck, like trying to get back home on the plane. And you sit there and you think, okay, yeah, they've got a small inconvenience. At least they're still going. They're going to be going back to a home. You know, you got these poor other people that, like you said, they've literally just lost everything. It's like you got to put it in yeah. a little bit of perspective. Yeah. For sure and yeah it is one of those things that like um not a great look on my side but like if i heard about that happening somewhere i wouldn't like I, i'd be like oh that's really sad but um just kind of being there with the people i was happening was just a pretty um surreal experience and really showing how much people there lost during that yeah. um so it was definitely a, a very um Sort of som- a much somber experience. experience. Yeah. Yeah. Quite... A very somber experience. Yep. Uh, right. Uh, KMIFF YD3QQ. What kind of equipment does he use and how does he make the AI sound so real? Well, I, I'm glad that um, he thinks that I make it sound real. Um, <laughs> that is one of the goals that I try to do. It's just always, yeah, like we were talking about earlier, it's always a pain getting it to work. Um, yeah, so I use Eleven Labs for my voices and Mid Journey for the artwork, um, and then Google Docs for writing the script. Um, just on my my laptop, I use the um, Adobe suite of tools for um, editing the pictures and stuff. Um, although that's been relatively new, um, I started off using Blender. Um, so for anyone who wants to start up using a uh, start up making an AI president's channel. I think all you really need is an AI art generator, um, which typically has a subscription cost, and then um, Eleven Labs, which has a subscription cost, or some other voice generation software. Um, and then that's that's really all you need to get started. Um, there's enough free softwares out there that you don't need to get anything past those points. Other things past that point do help as well. Oh yeah, definitely. I will say with uh, Eleven Labs, um, if you're looking at just 
at not spending any money on it just bear in mind that the number of characters you can use is is a lot smaller so make sure that you've got a good idea of what it is that you want in the say because you could find yourself that you're regenerating a lot of text uh, several times over and those characters they build up like you like it really took me by surprise like when i was doing the first campaign you know as the videos were only a few minutes long they weren't saying a huge amount but as i've started doing this other campaign like i am ramping through the characters like like crazy amounts and it's sort of like whoa <laughs> i need to make sure i'm actually writing this out how exactly i want it to be and i can't tell you how frustrated yeah. it is i've got this full paragraph and i'm listening and then they say form instead of from and i'm like oh you could be kidding me <laughs> yep and then you just have to regenerate and it costs that many more characters yep so yeah i i, I would say that i probably have to use probably about twice the number of characters that are actually in my script yeah. um sometimes it generates just fine but the ones where it has problems i feel like you have to generate it like three or four times a lot of times and yeah. so <laughs> and it's always on the long ones with yeah. the characters oh. every time that's the thing I'd, I'd very much i'd be quite happy just to do short uh short sentences but then sometimes they don't seem to flow very well so especially if like with like the volume or just like the the sort of tone in the voice it's like first they sounded quite serious now they sound like they're they're half drunk and it's just sort of so you, you get it all in a full paragraph and it's just uh honestly just the moment you you clock it in your ear and you just you hear that mistake it's just like oh here we go again yeah. <laughs> so another 400 characters gone <laughs> yep <laughs> yep that that's how it goes <laughs> every time <laughs> uh luke 5x wolcott if i said that right uh which president has the best jokes on the others and which one would be your favorite joke they have said so far uh let me think well i i think the the longest ongoing joke for the channel is that um joe can't remember um thorn's name um i've had that going since i think like episode <laughs> seven. um and so I, i'd say it's probably been my favorite joke of the of the things that i've done um I, I think joe is the one who's made fun of the most by far um and probably obama is made fun of the least um i i think at the end of the day, I think Trump is my favorite to write just because he's pretty volatile and you can make him do whatever you want and it, it still feels pretty accurate. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, yeah. <Yep. laughs> I, I say, yeah, the Ford joke. I've, I've recently restarted watching uh, your, your campaign. Uh, what, listening, I, when I drive to and from work, I've been listening to it and just right from the start he's just like i don't remember this fawn fella i'm sure it was something like like theo or peter <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and it, it sounded yeah it just it started off as just kind of an offhanded joke and then it just it's it's been in most of my D, &D episodes <laughs> since then so <laughs> oh dear um and finally we have one from a bubba xd are you subscribed to the Crafty GG channel? And if not, why do you hate yourself? <laughs> well, it's a thing. I am subscribed, so I don't hate myself. <laughs> Thank you very much, Bubba. That's a, that's a YouTube friend of mine. Uh, I appreciate the, uh, the attempt there, buddy. <laughs> I am subscribed, and if you're not subscribed, you should go subscribe. Thank you so much. And anyone who's watching who, for some reason, is not subscribed to Malafrex, so what are you doing even listening to this? The whole point is for <laughs> Malafrex. So if you haven't, go and subscribe right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, that is going to wrap it up for tonight's episode of Roll for Discussion. Thank you one more time for taking part in this I'm sure your fans will have enjoyed what you have told us tonight, and we all look forward to what comes next. Uh, if you'd like to say a few words before we close down. 
Yeah, first off, thank you for having me on the podcast. Um, it's been a lot of fun talking to um, another AI D&D creator. Um, it's just it's a really cool community we're a part of. Um, it's cool seeing some of the same people comment on everybody's videos in the oh. genre. Um, people who are just diehard fans of this. And uh, yeah, I just think it's really cool the progress that has been made by the AI presence community. Um, and I'm happy to be a part of it. Thank you very much. So thanks for having me on. You're very welcome. And thank you so much for taking part of this. This has been, this has been so much fun. And uh, the viewers at home, if you've enjoyed this content and you would like to see more, please like the video, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment down below and share it with your friends. I also offer an invite to all other content creators for the President D&D genre to come on this podcast and have a discussion. You can find me in my Discord group. The link will be in the description. Uh, you can I also be putting a link in for Malafrex's fan Discord group if anyone is interested in joining and has not yet done so. And so until then, next time, mateys, good evening.